Hey everyone and welcome back to another of my stone carving tutorials. So in a previous video we have seen how to attach a pneumatic hammer to the compressor and in this video I'm going to show you how a pneumatic hammer looks from the inside and then I'm going to tell you a little bit about the care and maintenance of a pneumatic hammer. I strongly believe that the knowledge and understanding of any object or concept for that matter must begin with a thorough analysis of the object itself. And this is why before talking about the care and maintenance of a pneumatic hammer, I'm going to open it up and show you how it looks from the inside so that we can see how it is constructed and consequently understand how to take care of it. For this demonstration, I'm going to use a Kuturi pneumatic hammer of the type A. Pneumatic hammers are basically very simple objects, but they are made with extreme precision and this is what makes them so efficient. They usually consist of three main elements. You have a hollow metal shaft, inside there is a piston, and then there is the third element that closes it from one side and connects the pneumatic hammer to the air hose. Now, in a minute, I'm going to open up this pneumatic hammer and I'm doing this so that you don't have to do it yourself. I strongly advise against opening up pneumatic hammers for a couple of reasons. First of all, is that they are made according to extreme precise measurements. And if you open them, you might damage them from the inside and therefore damage the whole hammer. And second, since pneumatic hammers are such simple systems, the manufacturers usually offer a very long warranty, but if you open them yourself, then the warranty would probably immediately lose its validity. So if you have a problem with your pneumatic hammer, don't open it up, get in touch with the manufacturer, probably you might need to send it back to them and they'll repair it for you. So again, I'm going to open it up and showing you how it looks from the inside so that you don't have to do it. So now that we have unscrewed this, we can have a look at the inside of the chamber. This is how the shaft looks from the above. And now it's quite dark in here, but the piston is fitted inside. So let's turn this shaft around and let's push the piston out. So this is what we have just seen from above. Here you can clearly see the piston inside. It's that metal piece with the two tiny holes and since the piston is perfectly fitted in here it won't come out by itself what I usually do is turn the hammer over and just gently tap and the piston will fall by itself and there it is so these are the only three elements of a pneumatic hammer I don't know what the official name of this is let's call it the connector then you have the piston and then the housing of the piston. And as you can see, this part is perfectly hollow. And you can see here that the connector has six holes at its upper part. And I am not 100% sure, but I think that that is where the air gets pushed from here through the holes into the hollow shaft to push the piston. And this is how a piston looks like. This is its bottom part, which is nearest to the connection with the air hose. And this is the part that will actually touch the striking area of the chisel. So this is all there is to it. It's quite straightforward. The piston fits perfectly in here. There you go. And then everything is sealed off by this piece. So air comes from here, it meets the piston and it pushes it very fast at an incredible amount of times per second. And the tiny but very fast back and forth movements of the piston will then strike the chisel that is fitted in here, which will then result in a carving action on the stone. So now that we have seen, although very briefly, how the hammer looks from the inside, we can move over to discuss how to take care of it. Now, if you have just bought a hammer and it doesn't work properly, that doesn't necessarily mean that there is something wrong with it. You see, they are made with very precise specifications and the piston fits almost perfectly in the cylinder and the tolerance here is just a couple of micrometers. So the hammer might sometimes need even up to 100 hours of usage 
before reaching its maximum power level. The single most important maintenance practice is to oil the hammer. Do this before and after each use and every two hours while in use. Detach the air hammer from the holes, turn it around and just place two drops of oil here at its back end, just like this. And give it some time so that the oil has the possibility to flow throughout the whole tool. It's very important to use the proper oil. There is a special oil for pneumatic hammers. Usually the manufacturers have their own oil and I strongly recommend to use that one. If you use household oils and other kinds of oils, they might become sticky and gummy and that might seriously compromise the functioning of the hammer. Another thing you need to watch for is that when connecting the pneumatic hammer to the compressor, never to use Teflon tape in the connecting elements. Because if a little piece of the Teflon tape breaks, it will be pushed by the air into the hammer and it will eventually clog it up. Last thing is to store your hammers properly. In a previous video, you have seen how I have created a special box just for my pneumatic hammers. But after using them, it's important to wipe them clean with a lightly oiled cloth. It would be also nice to store them wrapped in a lightly oiled cloth as well. This will prevent moisture to get into the tool and consequently it will prevent the oxidation of the elements inside the tool. And again, do not attempt to open them up yourself unless you are willing to lose the warranty on the tool and you're curious as I am. If you, for example, notice a reduction in power or the hammer stops working completely, that might be the result of some fine particle or some heavy dirty oil building up into the internal workings of the air hammer. Remember that if you want to clean your tool, disassembling the air hammer is not advised. What you could do best is to disconnect it from the air hose and then immerse it in an oil reducing solvent. Depending on the country you are in, this might take different names such as kerosene, naphtha, paraffin oil or distilled petroleum. For example, I have a bottle of distilled petroleum that I keep only for this purpose. The size of the bottle is perfect for the pneumatic hammers and what I regularly do is that I take the pneumatic hammer and fully immerse it into the bottle. There you go. Then I let the air hammer sit here in this oil reducing solvent for several hours after which I take out the hammer and I let the solvent completely drain out. Then I place again a couple of drops into the hammer as I've shown you, connect it to the compressor and start working again. I hope that the information was useful. If so, like, subscribe, share. This would be all very helpful. And if you have any comments or perhaps even suggestions about topics that I should discuss in future episodes, write those down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. As usual, I'm Adar Jaber and I'll see you next time. The neighbors are making noise again. I can't blame them. This is a studio after all, but uh, I have to wait. Another thing. And he just told me that today they're not going to make any noise.